conditional statements help us expand on our code so that um, we can actually uh, create sequences of code where the device that we are programming actually can start to make decisions based on different inputs in its environment, whether it's a sensor reading or a button being pressed. Um, we can actually tell our device what to do based on different inputs. Um, and everything to do with, or most things to do with, our conditional statements can be found in the logic section in the make code interface. And if we look at um, this section, at the very top we have a f our one type of conditional statement, and it basically reads like a sentence. It says, if something happens, then do this. Uh, below that we have another conditional statement, but this one is a bit more um, exp a bit more elaborate, where we're saying if this state this condition is happening, then do this, um, else or otherwise do this. And we're going to grab one of these blocks, and we're going to just drop it into our forever loop for this example. So basically, like I say, like I said earlier, we can actually read this as a sentence. Um, and let's say for this exercise, we want um, two separate events to happen based on if the A button is pressed or if the B button is pressed. Now, if we look at this conditional statement, we see that we don't have enough room to actually add a second condition in here because essentially we just have one condition, a spot for one condition to be um, explained here, and then we have an else statement which really isn't uh, a condition, it's just when when no when nothing's happening is basically what the else statement is saying. Um, the really neat thing though in make code is that if you click on this gear, we can now start to add to our condition conditional statement. So if I grab an else if from this left side and bring it into the right side and join it together with the rest of it, we can then see that I'm starting to expand on my conditional statement so that now I have not just one condition that I can elaborate on, but now I have a second condition right here as well. So let's say we are using our buttons for the two different conditions. Here we have button A pressed. I can actually click that right here to replace that true. And now we can start to read this again and it's start to sounding more it's starting to sound more like an actual sentence. If button A is pressed, then and we're just going to keep this simple. If we go into our music section and grab a tone, we can snap that in place. And now we can see that it actually makes a complete sentence, a complete condition. Um, if button A is pressed, then play tone middle C for one beat. And you can see our visualizer is showing how to connect wires so that it can play a sound. Um, but we can actually even just test this. So if I press A button, it plays that middle C note for one beat. Now let's keep expanding on this conditional statement and we can add a second condition here. So if we go back into our inputs and grab a button pressed again, this time though we want to change this to the B button. And we can click that in there. And then, let's just keep this simple again and take a play tone block again and we'll change this so that it's not the middle C, we'll say middle A for one beat. And we can test this again. So there's our A button pressed, middle C, and our B button pressed, middle A. And here we've created a very simple but uh, useful, perhaps, in uh, certain with certain devices, um, conditional statement where we have two different conditions that our code is waiting for, our device is waiting for. When one of these conditions happens, it'll run through a sequence of code. In this case, it's just um, a block of code for each condition, um, and uh, and and then, of course, if nothing is happening, it's just doing nothing. Um, 
So that, in a, a quick sort of nutshell, is um, conditional statements. And um, we can see how we can sort of change this up and use different conditions, whether you're saying, um, if my temperature sensor reads a certain number of degrees, then do this, and, and so on. Um, so we can get more complicated with this, but uh, at least for this for this purpose, we can uh, look at this as a good example of how we can sort of uh, use our buttons on the actual uh, micro bit to, um, to, to sort of run through different sequences of code.